Lord, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You never change. And uh, you abide faithful. Everything you said you will do, you will do. Because you are not a man that you should lie. Neither are you the son of man that you should repent. Everything that proceeds out of your mouth is already confirmed. We glorify your holy name. And so tonight, or this afternoon, we ask that you have your way in our midst. We ask that you open our understanding and teach us your ways. Help us to work with you. Help us, O oh God, to fulfill the destiny you ordained for us. And let everyone receive, Lord, the divine touch from you today. And no one will live here the same way they came. If there's still any baggage on the people, any load of burden, Lord, that they are lifting and carrying, I ask, O oh God, according to your word. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and the heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let rest be given to everyone here today. Let rest be given to everyone here today. Let rest be given to everyone here today. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and you may be seated in God's presence. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Once again, I want to welcome everyone of you to the house of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's what the young evangelist is beginning to keep quiet. We can have another room at the back there. Where she can express and ventilate very well. Amen to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. This morning or this afternoon, we are having our, our Thanksgiving and the communion service. We want to believe that um, the Lord will perfect, definitely will perfect all that concerns us. Amen. And um, what you need to do is to open up your heart. God, God is not a man. God is what he said he is. Amen? Amen. The major description of God you can give is not just power. Neither is it just judgment. The Bible says God is love. Praise the Lord. And of course, there's a lot of you know uh, stuff around that. God is love. And so his primary and major thing he does for people is to release and extend love to them. So yours is to open up and receive his love. Amen? Amen. And be willing to serve him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Very quick one. Christianity is not a religion. Is actually a life, the life of God given to man to be expressed. And so do not take coming to church like a religion, like others do. They just go to whatever place of worship to fulfill all righteousness. They just present themselves, hear the world, do the exercise, and then go and then go back and live their life the way they should go. Christianity is not like that. Otherwise, say being a believer is not like that. Alright? The fact that you make up your mind to be a believer. You have decided to change lineage. You have decided to change lifestyle. You have decided to come into a new life. And so the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, is what? Is a new creation. All the things are passed away. And all things are what? So it means what you used to talk before has to change. Praise the Lord. There still believers here who still use the F word. It's very wrong as a believer. Please, you can take that baby to the room over there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There are still some believers who talk. They just they have bad words in their mouth. They will tell you, you know me, I have bad mouth. You have bad mouth. It will take you to hell. Better change. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. It will take you. <laughs> Amen to Jesus. What God is looking for is a new creation. Amen. Amen. Please understand. If you are in Christ, we are a new creation. The battle we are fighting is really about the battle between good and evil. That's the battle we are fighting. It's not a battle of having a better house, a better life. No, that's not a battle. That, those ones, they are minor. Because those things don't really matter. By the time you leave this world, you find out that those things don't really matter. What really matters is your soul. So it's between good and evil. Having to make you either to compromise or to stand your ground and stay with God. Praise the Lord. And there's so many pressure and so many alluring, so many enticements around to pull you in the wrong direction. But you have to fight to stand. So that's the battle we're fighting. And it takes strength to fight that battle. Spiritual strength. Amen? Amen. 
because situation will turn. Things will happen around you that will make you want to go the other way and compromise and just you know. And each time you do that, you are losing, you are losing ground. Praise the Lord. So I just want us to understand so that you don't think that serving the Lord is a casual thing. It's not casual. It's a real thing. And it's about life and what? It's about life and death. It's about life and death. That means you must give your entirety, your totality, even to this life. And so this um, morning or this afternoon, I'll share briefly before we take the communion on uh, a very common familiar topic which has to do with our thing. Anyway, can we say together? Kingdom no. The kingdom influencer. The what? The kingdom influencer. So he's talking about you as an individual, me as a person, being a kingdom influencer. We all know that we have been called into a kingdom. And this kingdom is God's kingdom. The Bible told us in Colossians 1 verse 13 that we have been delivered from the powers or the authority of darkness. And sometimes you need to sit down and really, really meditate on this scripture because meditation helps you to unveil and unravel certain deep things. Because as you ponder and meditate, your mind is expanding. And God can, through that avenue, give you understanding and give you inspiration. Okay? He said he has delivered us from the power of darkness. Now, darkness, the Bible says, covers the earth and draws darkness to the people. Everyone who is not walking in the light is being controlled by darkness. Even the Bible told us that the way people speak, when you hear them talk, you can tell whether they are in the light or in the dark. In um, Isaiah chapter 8, verse, uh, verse 21, it says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Praise the Lord. Verse 20. Say to the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, according to God's word, if what comes out of their mouth does not agree with the word of God, it is because what? There is no light, There's no light in them. That means they are full of darkness. Hello, somebody. Alright, so we have been delivered from the powers of darkness and now we are translated into the kingdom of his dear son. So it's a battle between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. That's the battle. And you and I, we are caught in the middle. Amen. Amen. Remember the way God made man in the beginning, man was not created to live by himself. Man was created to be influenced and to live. Man was created like a vessel, a container, to house his spirit and to be controlled by his spirit. That's the way God made man in the beginning. So man was not created as an entity independent of an influence. No, he was created to be influenced. That's where we are. We are wired that way. That is why everybody can be influenced. Kingdom influencer, praise the Lord. That's why everybody can be influenced. That's why people can be, they can inhabit, they can host demons. Because man is, ah, like, of course, you have the story about the man who, the, the, the demoniac of Gadara, right? The demoniac of Gadara was like, you know, the immigration officer that welcomes you when you come into Gadara. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Bible says that this man lives in the tomb. And anyone that is coming into Gadara will first visit that man. And when they see a madman that is naked and doing all manner of stuff, they will run away. So as soon as Jesus came to the coast of Gadara, as soon as he stepped out, the Bible says, this demon-possessed fellow rushed and came to meet Jesus. I was trying to harass, you know, trying to show himself. And Jesus told the demons, get out. And the demons ran to him and began to beg, don't cast off to dry land. Look. He said, just allow us to go into this one. And he asked him, he said, what is your name? He said, we are legion. He said, because we are many. Praise the Lord. And the legion is about, about 2,000 minimum. So imagine 2,000 demons living in one man. One man. Where are they hanging? Praise the Lord. Where are they staying? <laughs> Just to tell you, to give an idea of how man is in the spirit. Man is a vast island. Because originally man was created to host God. Because God is bigger. 
Even the heaven cannot contain God. Hello, somebody. Right. So because man was created that way, he is open to influence. Man is meant to only be influenced by the Spirit of God. So the Bible told us in Romans 8 and verse 14, it said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Because the Spirit of God is meant to be the only operating spirit in your system. Any other spirit that operates you will operate you wrongly. You will malfunction. You will do the opposite. But if the Spirit of God is operating you, you will manifest God's nature, you will manifest God's attribute, and you will fulfill God's purpose. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so man was created that way. So he said we have been delivered from the powers of darkness, and now we are in the kingdom of God. You need to be conscious of the fact that you are in God's kingdom. It's a spiritual kingdom. You are there. Come on, say with me, I'm in God's kingdom. Right now. I am in God's kingdom. I am a citizen of God's kingdom. Because the only way to be in God's kingdom is to be born into it. Praise the Lord. And that is why except a man be born again, he cannot do what? So once you are born again, being born again is a spiritual operation. So once you are born again, you are now in the kingdom. So you are born into the kingdom. So what you need to do now is to learn the ways of the kingdom and live accordingly. But unfortunately, many believers are not, they are not yet learning, they are not living according to the kingdom yet. They still see themselves like they were before. You know, and if you cannot see yourself change, you will not change. If you think that see the old man, the old man will still control you. As a man thinking is out. And that is why transformation is a function of what? A renewal of the mind. Because in reality, you are already transformed. Your spirit is new. You have a new nature, but your soul still needs to be educated. So the soul, which house the mind, need to be re-educated. So once the soul is, the mind is renewed, then the soul will start to experience transformation. Amen? Amen. It's very important. So we are now in the kingdom and we have a responsibility to, to live in the kingdom, learn the word of the kingdom and manifest the kingdom. Now, having said that, now that you are in the kingdom of God, God didn't just put you in for nothing. Alright? You are in the kingdom, you are living in this world, God expects you to have the mindset of an agent of the kingdom. An agent. And being an agent means you are carrying out the functions and the activities of God's kingdom. God wants his kingdom to dominate the earth. Hello, somebody. That is what God wants. And that's why Jesus taught us to pray in John, Matthew chapter 6. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be what? Done on earth as it is in now. So God wants his kingdom to dominate. And now that he has children in his kingdom and we are in this world, he expects us to do what? Propagate the kingdom. He expects us to, to release the kingdom on earth. That is why you and I were here. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now there are five things or five pillars that will enable us once we have mastered these five pillars, we will become actual kingdom influencers. I've been talking about those five pillars this morning, but I'm just trying to bring a general introduction to what I'm saying. So that you know why you are here. Christianity, or rather, being a kingdom agent or being a kingdom citizen is not a religion. It's a different life entirely. We, what we do in, as believers is not just routine. It's a lifestyle. When we pray, we are not just praying out of duty. We are praying because our life depends on it. Praise the Lord. But if we don't pray, we, our connectivity with the, with the Father and with the Master, the King, will not be well established. And so men ought always to what? Pray. And not to faint. He said, pray without season. Amen. And also too, the Bible says, man shall not live by what? By bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Meaning, when you are reading the Bible, you are not reading to fulfill an obligation. It's your life. Because the word of God, as you read it, and you, you uh, Jeremiah said, thy words were found, and I ate them. 
You need to eat God's word. Praise God. The word of God says in, in Psalm 1, verse 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seats of the scornful. Say, but his delight. No, it was gay, you know, delight. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he did what? He meditates day and night. Now, meditation is one thing many believers don't do. Because each time they hear meditation, their mind goes to the negative part. They go to yoga. Or they go to all this meditative, Eastern, whatever religion. They do that a lot because they understand the principle. Because meditation is actually a principle. It's neither a good thing nor a bad thing. It's just a tool. Do you understand? It depends on who is using it. Just like a knife. A knife is either a good thing or a bad thing. A knife in the hand of the killer, he will kill somebody with a knife. But a knife in the hand of a woman in the kitchen, what will you do with it? She will cook with it, she will do some stuff with it. So it depends on who is handling it. So meditation is, is a principle which we, it, it enables you to focus. If your life is scattered and you don't have direction and you are distracted and then learn to meditate, it will help to focus. Put your mind at ease and then you will focus. Praise the Lord. So he said, but now we should meditate on the law of the Lord as believers. In his law, he meditates what? Day and night. Meaning, he scheduled time where he just sit down and be quiet and just meditate. If every time you just chit chat and talk, 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 sit down, be quiet and do what? Meditate. The Bible says, study to be quiet. So people don't know how to be quiet. Your engine is always running. <laughs> you don't know that before you talk. Each time you talk and talk too much, you will, you will lie. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says in the multitude of words, sin is not absent. So if you are the type that talk, 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 you will always lie. You will say something that will just, you will exaggerate and not say things that before you know which you will lie. Praise the Lord. So start it to be what? Quiet. That you will aspire to lead a quiet night to mind your own work business and work with your own hands and then as you command so learn to be quiet because in quietness you can have strength praise the lord the Bible says be still and know that i am god be still commune with your heart and be still so you meditate upon the word of god day and night when you do so he said he will you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water because Something will happen to you when you take time to meditate on God's word. It will change your mindset. It will change the way you think. It will help you see clearly. It will help you see victory in the midst of defeat. Hello, somebody. It will help you see success in the midst of apparent failure. And what you see eventually is what you will replicate. Praise the Lord. And so we need to learn the ways of the kingdom and live by them. So the kingdom of God has laws. Learn them, live by them, meditate on them. And the word of God you have in your head that you carry every now and then in your, in your phone, your tablet. Many people don't have physical Bibles anymore. Well, all well and good. But if you have Bibles in your phone, meditate on it. And technology has even made it and even advanced. It will not have audio Bible. Listen to it. Praise the Lord. Through audio Bible, you can listen to a whole book of the Bible. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Even though it has its variation, but I, I rather prefer you read because when you read, you, you concentrate. If you are listening, sometimes you are distracted. And praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. So, now that you are in the kingdom of God, there are things you need to do in order for you to actually fulfill God's mandate for your life. But primarily, understand that you are in this kingdom in order to be an agent and propagate and influence your world for the kingdom of God. That is why you are here. Every kingdom, every agent of the kingdom, they always have an agenda. You as a believer, do you have an agenda for the kingdom? Do you personally have an agenda for influencing your space, influencing your world? Because we talk about the world, we're not talking about the entire globe because you as a person cannot influence the entire globe. But you can influence your space, your environment. Praise the Lord. That little corner that you are, that little community, you can influence. And God expects you to do something about it. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. So, five things that will enable us, or five pillars that will help us to become kingdom influencers. And um, before I do so, probably I will let me see talk some more because I'll be needing five guys, five guys to be the representative here so that we can have a clearer picture. Because if you see a little drama here, that can stick more, can stick more than just words. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell your neighbor, you are born to influence your world. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell your neighbor you are not a believer just to have a nice time. You are a believer to fulfill God's agenda. Let me show you a verse of scripture, Ephesians 2 verse 10. Ephesians 2 verse 10. It says there, it says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for what? Good works. Which God prepared beforehand that we should do what? So it means before you were born, God already prepared that you should, you should do certain things. So when we are asking you to do something now, we are not telling you to do something that is just coming. It's something that you were born to do. In fact, that even brought you to this world. You are here to fulfill an assignment. Never forget that. You are here for a reason. And at the end of time, you will go back to your maker and you will give account. You will give account. Praise the Lord. Whether you like it or not. Praise God. That reality, that truth should sink into you every now and then. You will give account. You will give account. And what will you say? What will you tell God? What will you tell God that you've done for, you've done for him? Will you talk about your achievements on earth? Is that what you're going to tell God? Praise the Lord. Or what will you talk? What will you tell him regarding the agenda of his kingdom? Because that's why you are here. You are here to fulfill his purpose. Good works which God has ordained for us to walk in. And then, just a quick one here. Every child of God has a responsibility to be good to everybody. Don't be good to only those that are around you that are nice to you. Be good to every God. It's your responsibility. Because you never know how far one action of yours can reach. Amen? Amen. We are all connected in this world. Praise the Lord. Amen. Like somebody rightly said, he said you are four persons away from anybody in this world. Four persons. Can you believe that? You are four persons away from anyone in this world. It means you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows the president of Nigeria. We look up. Praise the Lord. It means you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows Donald Trump. You are four persons away from anybody in this world. You never know. So you never know what, how far your action or your activities can go. So be nice to everybody. Even the Bible says, even be nice to strangers because some people have entertained angels unaware. And we have already chased away angels from our way. Praise the Lord. Because of their activity. Because of the way they lead their life, or maybe because of the way they talk. Somebody see for the first time and is greeting you and you're frowning. Relax. At least hear the person now. Praise the Lord. Not everybody is a suspect. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know in the world of warfare, they tell everyone is a suspect. No, sir. People are nice people. Yes. Except they are possessed. <laughs> Amen to Jesus. Amen. But even if they are possessed, you can cast out the devil, right? Yes. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. But you see, we are created for good works. That God ordained before time that we should walk in them. Okay. So I need five people here, volunteers. Five brothers. Five brothers. Thank you. Five brothers. No, no, let, just let Osha stay there. Eight hey, brothers for her. Yeah, just. Okay. Um, as you. Uh, hey, come. There you are. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Five. Are you sure that thing will help you? 
Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, so we're going to be talking about the five pillars that will enable us to become kingdom influencers. And it's very important because we all are meant to influence our world for God. Amen? Yes. Irrespective of where you are, who you are, your pedigree, your whatever degree, it doesn't matter. You are meant to influence your world. And that is what counts as far as God is concerned. Amen. All right, now, so the first level as a believer is the level of being born again first. Amen? Amen. That's the first level. This is called introduction or commencement into the kingdom activities. So you are born again. This is the first pillar. To be a kingdom influencer, you must first be what? You must first be what? Born again. Born again. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, being born again. Then, after being born again, which makes you a bona fide child of God, which makes you, um, you know, a potential kingdom influencer, then you migrate from being born again to, you know, receiving the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, in this area, many people receive power and they pray much more for things to happen, for breakthroughs, for open doors, all by the power of the Holy Ghost and then for deliverance. So you move from here, now you are here, you receive the power, you encounter power, you ask God for things, and then things are done. But unfortunately, many believers remain here. Praise the Lord. They are born again, they come to this point where they are connected with God, and all they want is just to receive, and receive, and receive, just to meet their needs. But there's much more. Amen to Jesus. Then after being born again and receiving the power, and then you are receiving deliverance and breakthroughs and all that. The next aspect is for this aspect has to do with maturity, having the fruits of Christ manifested in you. You must manifest the fruit, you must grow in God and then bear the fruit of Christ. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 1, he said, I am the vine. Here are the branches. He said, every vine, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, my father does what? He removes it. So God is interested in your fruitfulness. And the fruit is talking about here, it's talking about the, the, the nature and the attribute of Christ, which is listed in Galatians chapter 5. Now let's hold on there. He said, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it, that it may do what? Bear more, bear more fruit. Mm. Which means, while you are bearing fruit, God will subject you to certain pruning so that more can come out. Amen? Amen? Because what God is seeking to see in each and every one of us is Christ. That's what God wants to see. We are grafted in. Jesus is the plant, is the vine. We are grafted in to bear the fruit of Christ. So when God looks at you, he wants to see his son in you. The Bible says in Romans 8 and verse 29, he said, to whom he did foreknow, then he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his dear son. Hallelujah. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So God predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. Because his son is the prototype of the kind of man, the ideal man that God wants on earth. The first man that was made was Adam. We all know him, the first Adam. He messed up, but Jesus came as the second Adam. So God wants to see his son in us, and for that to happen, we must start bearing the fruit of Christ. Praise the Lord. This is so important because this is like the glue that holds everything together. Amen? If this one is absent, other things will not work. And that's why God is seeking for this to happen. He wants to see the fruits of Christ manifesting much more in us. Praise God. So we move from being born again to receiving breakthroughs and deliverance and all that. And then we must grow. We must do what? As believers, we must. It's a, it's a prerequisite. It is, it is mandatory that you grow. Because... The danger of not growing is that you will eventually mess up. That's the danger. The danger is that you will, and the, 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 the irony at the end of the day will that, God forbid, 
one might not make it to heaven. Because if you don't grow, the character of Christ will not be seen in you. And these are the very things that, 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 that frustrates the enemy. The character of Christ, the nature of Christ is what frustrates the works of the enemy. Because the enemy will be doing everything he can to tarnish this character. He doesn't mind you having breakthrough. Have all your breakthrough, no problem. But once that character is not there, he has gotten you. Because he knows that every breakthrough and everything will end when you die. But what we live on is your soul. And if your soul does not have the character of Christ, it's going nowhere. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then the next step is, this one has to do with much more with, because now you are relating to the physical world, you are relating to the economic world, you need to be skilled. Somebody say skilled. skilled. That means you must be trained in things. IT, engineering, medical doctor, whatever, name it. You must have a skill. Because to influence your world, you must know something. Hello, somebody. You must not remain an employee all your life. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thinking of only to earn salary. You cannot be earning salary and then and be effective in influencing your world. Just follow me. Amen? Yeah. We need to be trained. We need to be skilled. We need to go for, expose ourselves to training and get some skill that we can add value, that can help us add value to life. Praise the Lord, somebody. But you see, this one, although, like I said, this is the main one, the character development and the lifestyle of Christ. Like Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I what? I live. He said, yet not I. Christ lives in me. He said, the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and what? Gave himself for me. Praise the Lord. So this is the main one. Now this one, people can acquire skill even without being born again. Yeah. Hello? Uh, people can acquire skill even at the level of just salvation. But you see, if you have skill and you don't have this, you will not eventually do this. This is the main influencer. This is where you are influencing your world. Praise the Lord. Because now you are born again, you have a breakthrough, you understand the power of the Holy Ghost and all that, and you have the character, the lifestyle of Christ. Praise the Lord. You have the lifestyle of Christ working in you. Then, with your skill, when you go to the marketplace, you can influence them. While you are busy doing your thing, they will see a marked difference in you. They will know you are not like them in the world. Praise the Lord. They will know you are not like them out there who will easily compromise all because all they want is just money. But you have are, you are, you are gone beyond just money. What you want to do is to serve humanity. Amen? What you want to do is to affect lives. What you want to do is to add value to lives. It's not just to make money. Because if it's just to make money, then the goal has been, you know, the enemy can give you money whenever he wants. Praise the Lord. You can compromise to get money. It's very easy. But because you are a kingdom influencer, you are thinking like an agent, a kingdom agent. Your agenda is to influence your world for Christ. Because what you do for Christ is what you transcend to eternity. Hello, somebody. What you do for Christ is what will translate to eternity. The Bible says, blessed are the dead that die in Christ. Therefore, their works follow them. So what will follow you is the good works you did for the sake of Christ. So now you have the skill as an engineer. You have the skill as an IT person. You can solve, you can decode problems and all that. You can, you can create apps that can help people and all that. Very good. With that, you can formulate stuff that will help people and put them on the right path. You can influence your world. You have skill. And then this is where you are now. Because you have this, you can influence your world. But when you go to the marketplace, you are relevant there. Praise the Lord. So the first cadence or so the five pillars that must be observed is this. Being born again, knowing the power of God, having the life of Christ manifesting in you, the fruit of Christ, and then having skill. Because if you don't have enough skill, there's really little you can do. You can be oppressed easily. But if you have something that people need, they will come to you. Praise the Lord. When you have what they need, they'll do what? 
will come to you. And when they come to you, because you are already having the lifestyle of Christ, they will see a marked difference in you. Hallelujah. Amen. And then you can easily influence them. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen to Jesus. So these are the five pillars in a nutshell. But listen to this. I'll give an example here in the Bible. There are two, two very wonderful examples that we know of kingdom influencers. And these men rose to power. And uh, we don't have enough time to read their story, but we all know the story. I'll just draw your attention there. The first one is, is Joseph. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Joseph was part of um, the promise because he's the son of Jacob. And Jacob had the promise and the blessing of God on his life. But you see, Joseph was different from the other brethren because he took time to study with his father. At the time God, uh, Jacob had uh, Joseph, he had an encounter. And this encounter transformed his life. He began to teach his children. So when Joseph was gone, he took time to teach Joseph a lot of stuff. And being that Joseph also is the, you know, the, the child from the, the beloved wife, the one he actually loved, Rachel. Amen. So he took more liking to Joseph. And he taught Joseph a lot of stuff. And the Bible told us that from a child, Joseph will always go to see their brethren, see his brethren, and then he will come back and be reporting the evil deeds of, their brother, of, the, of the brethren to the father. And the father will, why is this boy doing this? I mean, he's different from the others. He always talk about what they are doing wrong. That, they didn't do this one well. That one was not well done. This one, this one. You know, as if he's talking like somebody who knows what he wants in life. And the Bible says the father will observe him. And then that make matters more interesting. Along the line, he had a dream. We all know the story. The first one, he saw the stars, the moon, and all that bind down to him. And then he told the father and told the brethren. The father was pondering over that dream. Okay, there must be something here. He now dreamt another one again. He now saw the brothers. He saw the sheep of the brothers bind down to his own sheep. And his own sheep now rose. And the way they told the brothers, the brothers were like, what's wrong with you? It's only dream, you dream. Come and walk. Amen. Because the boy was always in the house. Praise God. And the brothers would be at the field taking care of the sheep. With wild animals. So they are always out there in the field. But Joseph is always in the, you know, at home, probably studying and doing all that. Then on this occasion, after the father now sent Joseph, go and see how your brothers are doing. He now went. Out of excitement to meet his brothers. Unknown to him, they already plotted. We are long story short. They sold him to Egypt. Amen. Amen. Being in Egypt, he was already having the character, as it were, of a leader. Somebody who knows right from wrong. And that helped him. And then he began to do his work as a slave in the house of Potiphar. From being a slave and the way he was conducting and carrying himself, he was already influencing people. They already know that this one is different. While others are complaining, he's not complaining. He's just doing his work. While others are trying to cut corners and bend the rules, he's just straight doing the way, doing what he knows to do, not cheating, not doing anything wrong. And then before long, Potiphar noticed him that this one is different. And he made him the head of all, all the slaves. Praise the Lord. Because if you have the life of God manifesting and you are doing what God wants you to do in terms of lifestyle, character, and activities, they will single you out. At first, they will hate you. Why? Because you are not doing what everybody is doing. Amen? Amen. You are not cheating like every other, every, other, every other person. When you come late, you declare, I came late. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, back in those days, I remember I worked, I worked in one factory company years ago. You have a car, you have to clock in. Amen. Amen. And sometimes, because when people come late, they give their car to one another, just help, help me clock in. And then they were clocking, but the person was not strolling after I see the person came early. Now, all of those things, they are it's cheating. Praise the Lord. That you, are doing, you are being smart physically, but uh, what you don't know is that everything is being recorded. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. No, but you can't be too smart for God. God sees everything. Amen? And these are part of the things that will constitute the judgment of that day. That's why you must be straight at all times. Amen? Praise the Lord. Anyway, so Joseph was doing the right thing. And remember, promotion does not come from the east. 
nor from the west, nor from the south. It comes from who? It comes from God. The actual promotion of life comes from God. And he will only promote you when you are qualified. When you have shown that you are worthy of it. Some people promote themselves, not God. Some people rush to be dead, just want to they clamor and do everything just to make sure they get there. They will get there, but they will not last. Because they fought and compromised and they lost up to get there. But the after one that God gives to you, you will be established there. So Joseph was qualified for it and was promoted. He became the head of all the workers in Potiphar's house. And from being a normal slave boy, he became the supervisor. Praise the Lord. Amen. Even in a short period of time. Well, long story short, <clears throat> temptation now came again. Praise the Lord. And that temptation was another test because a promotion is around the corner. Because every test is a temptation. But every test, sorry, temptation is what a test. Praise the Lord. Every temptation is what? Yes. A test. And whenever there's a test, it means there's promotion around the world. I mean, you cannot move to the next class without being, without being tested. Praise the Lord. So each time you are giving a test, it means there's what? You must have that at the back of your mind. Each time you have a test, it means there is what? A promotion. And so the next test came. And what helped Joseph to overcome the test was the fact that he had the what? The character and the life of Christ manifested in him. He had the fear of God in him. And then he said to the lady, even if I do this thing, I trust you will not tell your boss, your other, because we just can keep secret for life. Potiphar will never know. Praise the Lord. But he said, I can't do this thing and then sin against who? God. God. Because you can't hide it from God. So he's not about the boss now, he's about God. So what is keeping him is not the fact that he's not he's afraid of the boss. He's not afraid of the boss. He's afraid of oh God. So he said, I can't do this wickedness. And then and the man got angry. He felt insulted. And like they said, they say hell has no fury. Oh, I thought you had to finish it. Okay, they say hell has no fury like the woman's tongue. Praise the Lord. So she felt scorned, and then immediately her mind went into play, and then she quickly manipulated the whole thing, and then turned the whole thing against Joseph. Long story short, Joseph went into prison. But you see, it was a promotion. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. It was a promotion. Even though it looked as so as if he went down. But that's the way God works with people. Sometimes you go down in order to rise higher. Praise the Lord. All things, the Bible says, work together. For good. For who? To them that love God. And to them who are called according to the spot. So to a child of God, there can never be any disadvantage. Praise the Lord. To a child of God, there cannot be what? So a seeming setback to a child of God is not a disadvantage. If you understand God's purpose. It's not. He said, when you go through the fire, I'll be with you. When you go through the waters, I'll be there with you. Hallelujah. Okay. Long story short, after two long years of being in prison, though he met some people, he helped them solve their problem, and one of them forgot him for another two years, but Joseph kept on with them, with God, doing his stuff. And the Bible says that he was in prison until the time his word came. And the word of God tried him. Praise the Lord. Because if God is going to lift you up, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be tried. I won't lie to you, ladies and gentlemen. In this kingdom, to rise in this kingdom, we rise through trials and suffering. Do you understand? This is the raw truth. In this kingdom, we rise through suffering. And trials because that's the way our master did it. You think it was an easy thing to go to the cross? The Bible says in Hebrews 12, verse 2, it said, Who for the joy that was set ahead of him, he endured the cross and he despised the shame. 
who for the joy looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the there are some things you will have to endure for the sake of Christ. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I know a brother years ago, years ago, who he has this, he's soft tempered, but he's a believer. This brother, if he gets angry, and he's a very short, short guy. Short, <laughs> oh my goodness. And he's not so big, but the guy, he can, if he gets angry, he can kill. You will see him as if he's all very tiny, but oh my goodness. <laughs> so one day, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Back in those days, he didn't have a car, so he entered this public transport. And then the conductor began to talk. He took an ear. And he had the Bible with him. He was looking at the guy. <laughs> He was shaking his head. <laughs> if not for this thing. Oh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He, was, he said, this guy is too small for me. I mean, I mean, this guy. Anyway, long story short, after a while, he couldn't take it anymore. He dropped the Bible. <laughs> and beat the hell out of the guy. Then after much fighting, somebody like, who has this Bible? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now my point is this. Jesus endured the cross. There are things you have to endure. People will mess you up. Even those that are not even up to you. They will mess you up. But there are times you just have to what? You may look stupid, but do what? Hey. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So the race we are running, this race we are running, it requires you. Know what you're doing. Otherwise, you will just fall along the wayside and just compromise. He endured the cross. You think everyone that was beating Christ and speaking, he, he couldn't do something against them? He had the power. Praise the Lord. He had the power. When they came to arrest him, you all know the story. After rising from prayers, Judas came with the gun to arrest him. And then they asked him, they were looking for Jesus of Nazareth. He said, and that said, after asking him, they said, we're well, looking for Jesus. So he said, I am he. As soon as he said, I am he, the Bible said, they all, they all fell to the ground. The power hit all of them, they all fell to the ground. He could have just walked away and escaped. But they stood there. He said, you guys, stand up. You're looking for me. Okay, take me and go. Praise the Lord. He had to endure all of these things because of the sake, for the sake of the joy that was set before him. Amen to Jesus. So if men are ridiculing you and doing stuff against you, even though you are on your right, and they're still cheating you as a believer, because you want to maintain peace, you stay. Others will say you are stupid. No problem. Just stay. Amen to Jesus. Amen. <laughs> because at the end of time, God will rise for you. Amen. Praise the Lord somebody. Hallelujah. Like he rose for Joseph. Eventually, Joseph... God called, God gave uh, Pharaoh a dream, and he couldn't, he was messed up with the dream. Asked everyone, they couldn't tell him the interpretation, yet he wasn't satisfied. And then the, 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 the butler, the butler, the baker, mm. the, butler. the butler, remembered that there was a man in the prison that helped him interpret his own dream. He now told Pharaoh, say, Pharaoh, oh, I remember my sin today. I remember there's a young man in the prison. This man did this, he helped me interpret my dream, and it was accurate. Call for this young man, and he will help you. And they sent for Joseph. And as soon as Joseph came, after cleaning up himself, stood before Pharaoh, and then said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh, interpretation belongs to God. Tell me your dream, and God will give Pharaoh the interpretation. And Pharaoh now gave him the dream. Two dreams. And then Joseph now said, all right, these two dreams, they are one. And because you had this dream twice, it means it is confirmed. Because in the matter of two or three witnesses, everyone is established. And that said, he gave him the interpretation. Seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. You will have seven years of abundance. You will enjoy and think life is all about that. But you say after that, there's plenty years of famine coming. So, but now what you need to do is to make sure that in the year of abundance, gather some, save some. 
so that when famine comes, you have reserve to follow. So he now told Pharaoh, Pharaoh, look for somebody that can, can do this issue. Okay. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Pharaoh looked and said, ah, ah. There's nobody in this kingdom. I've asked everybody about come on dream, you can't tell me. So he said, no, that's all. Praise the Lord. Long story short, Joseph became the prime minister. And that's how Joseph became a kingdom influencer. Now, but what helped him along the line was the character. Amen? Amen. If he had failed there, he would have missed that one. Praise the Lord. And so every believer must work on that area, which is very key. And that is the focal point upon which men are going to be judged on that day. That aspect of the fruit of Christ. The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, patience, faithfulness, kindness. Against such, say there's no law. Praise the Lord. Because if you walk in law, all your intention will be good to people. All you'll be thinking about is how to do good to people. Amen? No matter what. They may treat you bad, but your responsibility is to be good. Do you understand? Yes. To the world, you are stupid, but you are being wise in the spirit. Yes. See, that's, that's why we are different. We are not of the world. We are not meant to think like the world. We are meant to think like kingdom citizens and kingdom agents. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. And that, that's one example. Another example again is Daniel. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm citing these two people because they rose to the height of influence. And they are all agents of God. Both of them. When Daniel got to Babylon, the Bible says Daniel was also of the king's seed. And he was taken to Babylon alongside with other people. And then the Bible says Nebuchadnezzar at that time was the king of kings on the earth. God allowed him to have so, so much power. And he thought he was doing all that by the strength of his own power. He didn't know that God allowed him. Amen? Mm -hmm. Every man is a puppet in the hands of God. Do you understand? Yes. The earth is the Lord's and the yes. fullness thereof the world and they that dwell there. The Bible says the heart of the king is in the hands of God. So Nebuchadnezzar was allowed of God to do what he was doing. And the Bible told us he now selected and he told them to select very quality people, students that can learn and become wise men in his kingdom. And Daniel was chosen alongside with his friends, four of them. And the Bible told us that Daniel made a decision that actually told us more about his character and his person. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, and the Bible says, And Daniel... And Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not do what? Defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Thereof he requested of the chief of the inn that he might what? Not. Why? Because what the king is eating was already dedicated to idols. And Daniel didn't want to involve himself with all that. He didn't want to defile himself. Because he knew where he was coming from. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then he kept on like that. And the Bible says because of that, he told the, the, the prince of the eunuch, please give us, um, you know, uh, now he brought, okay, now go to verse 10. That the chief eunuch said, I fear my lord, the king who has appointed your food and drink. For why should he see your faces looking worse? than the young men who are your age. Then he would endanger my head before the king. So Daniel said the steward, he says, set or set over, okay, that was sent over Daniel, Adonai, Michelle, and Azariah. He said, please test your servant for 10 days, just 10 days. And let us eat what? Vegetables. Give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. Vegetables to eat. Good choice. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And the Bible says, all right, say please. All right. Now, and the Bible told us that after 10 days, they appear fresher, stronger, and better, and even more wiser than the rest of them. Now, 
But it started because he determined in his heart not to do what? He finds himself. That's where it started from. Then God gave him favor. Praise the Lord. Long story short, Daniel went through all that. At the end of time, Daniel became the chief of all the presidents in Babylon. After the advent of Nebuchadnezzar, then the sun came in, and then the other king, uh, Zedarius. And Raoul told us in, uh, in Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5, verse, uh, or Daniel chapter 6. Chapter 5 or chapter 6. The same hour, no, chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. From verse 1. Said, and it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom. And over these three governors of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. Verse 3. He said, then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. So you see, Daniel rose to power to a place of influence that even the king knew him. Praise the Lord. Even the king knew him and he was able to influence everyone around him. But what made him stand out much more was the fact that he had the fear of God in him. He stood out and refused to defile himself. So if we are going to be kingdom influencers, we must work on this aspect. Amen? Amen. Otherwise, our working will just will be a joke. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We will not be effective. But God wants us to be what? Effective. Tell him, but God wants you to be effective. Tell him, say, God wants you to be effective. God wants you to be a kingdom influencer. Hallelujah. This is so important. This is so important. All right, so we cannot just carry on coming to church, hearing the word of God, and all we're thinking about is how God will bless us and make give us open doors. That is not why God saved you. Because the things you are asking for, they are too small. There are things even Satan can do. But there are things the devil, the devil cannot do. God wants you to be a representative of him here on earth. In your own little space. Influence that place for Christ. Influence that place for God. That is what God wants. That shows that you are a true citizen of the kingdom. It means you are thinking about the kingdom. Thinking about the king of the kingdom. You are seeking to do his will, not your will. Because we are all created to do God's will. Hello. Because your own will will take you to destruction. Praise the Lord. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man. Say, but the end is what? So it is the will of God that will connect you with him. So your ultimate desire should be to do his will. Hallelujah. And as we carry this mindset and live with this mindset, we'll begin to understand God's operation and we'll be seeing many more dimensions. And just like we talked about the theme of the month, this, uh, of this month, God will unveil unto you new dimensions. He will unveil unto you new greatness, new dimensions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All right. So I'm going to quickly stop on that and then talk about the communion. Then we'll take the communion. Amen to Jesus. And this is so important. Now, the communion is a practice that we do. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Each time we take the communion, we are showing the Lord's death till he come. It means we remember what he did for us. It means our salvation was not was not a cheap entity. It was actually, you know, bought. It was paid for. And it was paid for by the precious blood of Christ. Jesus went through all that so that we can have salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. So that we can be redeemed and be delivered from the destruction and the judgment that is to come. So God puts his vengeance upon Jesus. The vengeance he had proposed for man, he placed it on Jesus so that 
Jesus can be the sacrificial lamb that is sacrificed for our sake so that we don't have to go through the same anymore. So when we come to him, he makes us new creation. And now what God is looking at is to see his son in us. Each time he look at us, he wants to see Christ in us. Amen to Jesus. Amen. So we are taking the communion to remind us of what he did. To appreciate also the salvation that he brought to mankind. And the communion also is powerful in the sense that it is potent. Alright? The blood and the body of Christ. Each time you partake, you are connected. The same life force of God flows inside of you. And whatever is not of God in you will be eliminated. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's have the communion. Thank you, Father. Before